Hello friends. Johnny and Jenny were having a game of Ludo. Johnny said, You take this die and pick up a number and I will say you what lies opposite to it. Jenny thought, uh, Really? Okay, let's try then. Jenny called out of a number 5. Johnny immediately responded 2. Jenny said 6. And Johnny said, it's one. Ginny thought, how is possible without seeing how he is able to know what is on the opposite? It's magic. Now let's see what's the magic behind the Ludo. Actually, in a Ludo die, the opposite sides always add up to seven. That means if you have one on one side, we will have six on the opposite of it. If you have 2, the opposite will be 5. If you have 3, the opposite will be 4. So we get a, a rule like this. Suppose if you have 1, the opposite will have 7 minus 1, that is 6. So similarly, if you have n, obviously the other side will be 7 minus n. Now n can be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, anything. So according to that, we will have the opposite side. So we can state it like this in an expression. Let us take there is a number n on one side. So the opposite side will be 7 minus n. As we have seen the table, if uh, one of the side is 1, the other side is 7 minus 1, that is 6. So if you take 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and n can be anything. So n is not fixed. So here 7 minus n is called as an algebraic expression. So an alge algebraic expression contains letters, numbers, and signs. So the letters like a to z any letter numbers uncountable starting from one anything it can be integers also here signs that is plus minus into divide anything so here we have to see letters now letters are for the variables so variables are denoted by the letters now what is variable variable are which does not have a fixed value. As you have seen, the n can be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, anything in that Ludo die. So the numbers are the constants. So constants means which is fixed. Now the 7, the number 7 is fixed because when you add the two sides, you will always get 7. That is fixed. So 7 is the constant and n is the variable here. And the operator. Here we have minus so subtraction so is the operation. So for that we use the minus symbol. So that is the operator. So algebraic expressions. So we can say a set of numbers and the letters. So numbers means uh, the constants, letters are the variables joined with the signs of the operations. When I say signs of the operation, that is the operators. Plus, minus, multiplication, sign, division, sign. These are the operators. So like this, these are the sum of the examples uh, for an algebraic expression x minus let's go through some basics so let us take this expression 7x squared plus 7xy plus 5y cubed plus 7x plus 8 so here you can see that we can use as many variables as desired that means it is not that only one variable that is only x we will use it's not like that we can use as many variables as we need so here you can see we have used our two variables that is x and y. We can use x, y, z, a, b, c, anything. Any number of variables can be used in one expression. Next thing, the basic formation of expression. How an expression is formed? Suppose we have x squared. Now how x squared is formed? x squared is formed by multiplying x and x. So x into x will give you x squared. Similarly, x, y means when the letters are written together combiningly. So x, y. That means it is x into y. That one you have to remember. x y means x into y. 5 y cubed. So 5 y cubed means 5 into y into y into y. That becomes 5 y cubed. This is the formation of the expressions. Now let us see terms of an algebraic expression. So terms are nothing but the parts of the expression which are separated by the plus sign. These are the parts of the expression. So a term can be a number or a single variable or numbers and variables multiplied together. So it can be only a number like 7 or only a variable like uh, x 
and it can be numbers and variables multiplied together like 7x squared. So let's see. 7x squared plus 7xy plus 5y cubed plus 7x plus 8. Let's take this expression now. Here we can see these are the parts of the expression that are separated by the plus sign. Here you can see there are 1, 2, 3, 4 plus sign. So we have got 5 parts. So these are the terms of the expression. So the terms are 7x squared, 7xy, 5y cubed, 7x and 8. So we can say these terms are added to form the expression 7x squared plus 7xy plus 5y cubed plus 7x plus 8. Let's take another expression. Here we have involved minus symbol also. So we can see here wherever minus is there we can just convert it like as you can see minus 7xy can be written as plus of minus 7xy and minus 7x can be written as plus of minus 7x. So you can see here these are the parts that are separated by the plus sign. So here we can say the terms are 7x squared minus 7xy plus 5y cubed or only 5y cubed minus 7x and 8. So here we can see instead of writing plus of minus 7xy directly we can take a minus 7xy as a term of this expression with the negative sign. So here we can say these terms are added anyhow plus of minus will come minus only. So these terms are added to form the expression 7x squared minus 7xy plus 5y cubed minus 7x plus 8. Next factors of a term. Now let's take this expression 7x squared minus 4xy plus 5x squared y. So here let's find out the first how many terms are there. So the terms are 7x squared 4 minus 4xy and 5x squared y. So there are three terms. So let's factorize it. So when I say factorize it, remember how a term is formed, an expression is formed. So 7x squared. So 7x squared is formed by multiplying 7 into x into x. Similarly, minus 4xy is formed by minus 4 into x into y. And 5x squared y is formed by multiplying 5 into x into x into y. So this is the factorization. Next, factors of 7x squared we can write as 7 x and x. So 7 x and x are the factors of the term 7 x squared. Similarly, minus 4 x y. Minus 4 x y can be written as minus 4 x and y. These are the factors of minus 4 x y. Similarly, 5 x squared y. 5 x squared means x into x. So x and x and y. So in this way, we can find the factors of a term of a particular term. Here. Next, so algebra expression can be written in form of terms and terms will be written in the form of factors. It is simple like uh, we can take a sentence, a sentence is formed by words and words are formed by letters. This is the same way. So we can compare these two. So let's see, let's take a sentence, I love math. So this is a sentence. How this sentence is made by using how many words? There are three words. And again, these three words are made using some letters. So I is made using single letter love is made using four and math is using four let's see this so you can see here i l o v e are the letters used for love and m a t h are the letters used for writing the word math so in this way expressions are also form so for an expression 3x squared y minus 2xyz plus 7 we can split it into its terms so we have three terms again these terms are separated and splitted into factors. So 3x squared y, 3xxy minus 2xyz, 7 is 7 because it is a single term. So this way we convert a expression into its terms and it, again it is splitted into factors. So this is the tree diagram. Next types of algebraic expressions. You can see three sets of expressions. Now each uh, set of expression has something in it. Like you can see here, the first set has only single term. The second set has two terms in this expression. And the third set has three terms in its formation. Now you can see here, single term. Only one term is there. There is no more operators here. Means like plus or minus. Because plus and minus separate the terms. 
So here there is no operator. So there is only one term and two terms. You can see here there are two terms 5x and 4. Similarly, three terms 5x minus 2y and 4. So an expression where there is only single term, it will be called as monomial. And when there are two terms, it will be called as binomial. And when there are three terms, it will be called as trinomial. So we can say so monomial has single term, binomial has two terms and trinomial has three terms. So similarly quadrinomial will have four terms. So if an expression has four terms, it will be called as quadrinomial. But all together they come under polynomials. Now poly means many. Mono means single, bi means double, that is two, tri means three, quadri means four. So poly means many. So polynomials. But here you have to say that a monomial I cannot call as a binomial and a binomial I cannot call as a trinomial because these are specific. Because the, the names are given according to the number of terms. If it is one term, monomial, three terms, trinomial, like that. So we cannot exchange these names. But all of them we can call as polynomials. So variables, constants and operators together they form polynomials. And polynomials are also algebraic expression, the same thing. Polynomials or algebraic expression both mean the same. Next. Coefficient. So coefficient is nothing but an, a factor expressed in Arabic numerals. Arabic numerals, the, our Hindu Arabic, the 1, 2, 3 and all the numbers. So it is also called as numerical coefficient. Now let's see what is this numerical coefficient. So the coefficient of 7x squared will be 7. So because 7 is the number part here x squared now the question comes 2 is also a number but 2 is the square function here so it doesn't come under a number here now x squared is a function so here so 7 x squared so 7 is the number part here so this is the numerical coefficient or we can say only coefficient of 7 x squared similarly suppose we take coefficient of minus 4 x squared y so minus 4 is the number part so minus 4 is the coefficient of minus 4 x squared y and then coefficient of x squared y now here we see there is no number but x squared y is nothing but 1 x squared y but in algebra we don't put 1 so we simply we write x squared y so here if it is missing that means there is 1 so there is only 1 x squared y so the coefficient will be 1 here and following this coefficient of minus xy will be called as minus 1 as we have minus xy so that means there is minus 1 now let's see more about coefficient in a general way now what is this general way so any factor or a group of factors of a term by which the remainder of the term is multiplied well, let's uh, see it here suppose you have taken a term 5x squared yz so here suppose the question is what is the coefficient of 5x squared. So here you remember in general way we will find the coefficient of a particular factor or a group of factors. Here we have taken we will find the coefficient of only 5x squared. So when we have to find only for 5x squared what we have to do just leave 5x squared. Leaving 5x squared what is left out yz. So the coefficient of 5x squared will be yz that means to that factor what is multiplied so that will be the coefficient of that factor that is coefficient of 5x squared to 5x squared yz is multiplied so that becomes yz is the coefficient of 5x squared in 5x squared yz so similarly coefficient of 5z so leave 5z 5 and z if you leave out we will be left out with x squared y similarly coefficient of y so only y you take out so we will get 5 x squared and z so that will be the coefficient of y means to y what is multiplied to y 5 x squared z is multiplied so the coefficient of y is 5 x squared z so here we can say coefficient are of two types one is the basic that is the numerical one generally what we say and another one is general so here we can see coefficient of 5 x squared y z so this is the numerical one always remember so whenever it is asked the quotient of the total term then it will be the numerical only but when it is specifically asking about singular factor like coefficient of 5z in 5x squared yz 
then we have to find out to 5z what is multiplied so leaving 5z whatever factors are left out that is x squared y here so that one will be the coefficient of 5z so these are the two things one is a numerical coefficient when you say that means uh, coefficient of the total term and in the general one coefficient of a some factors or a group of factors will be asked next constant term as we know constant so which doesn't change here so at algebraic expression which has a no algebraic factor that means there are no variables in that term so let us consider this expression 3x squared y minus 2xyz plus 7 so here we can see 7 is a constant term because 7 has a no algebraic factor it doesn't have any variables like x y or z here so 7 is a constant term but here you have to uh, know about constants and constant term. what's the difference here constants means 3 2 and 7 are the constants because they are fixed values the, the numericals but 3 and 2 i cannot call as constant terms so when you are speaking of terms 7 is the constant term here because it is separated by a plus and you can see here but this 3 and 2 are the factors of the term 3x squared y they are not a, a single terms so they are the part of the terms so they are the factors of the terms 3x squared y and minus 2xyz so those will not be constant terms so here the constant term is only 7 now let's see more about terms here like terms now uh, just see some of the terms here 7x squared y minus 2x squared y uh, 3yx squared and x squared y. in all of the these you will find all are having the same variables you can see here uh, all are having x all are having y then and all the variables are having the same power also you can see here uh, the power of x is 2 everywhere so x squared everywhere it is x squared only next y is y y y everywhere it is y that is y to the power of 1 so in the total set all are having the same variable and also with the same power then these types of terms will be called as like terms so here x squared everywhere we have x squared y only then these are called as like terms now similarly unlike terms now in unlike terms you can see here we have 7 x squared y squared and 5 x squared z squared so here there are different variables you can see here uh, in the first one we have x and y in the second we have x and z the variables are different but the powers are same so again another one minus 7 x y and minus x squared y squared here we can see the variables are same x y x y but the powers are different here so these types of terms are called as unlike terms where the variables and the powers don't match each other so here to become like terms the most important thing is first thing we have to ignore the numericals we don't care about the numericals whatever the integer part may be it may be 7 it may be minus 3 it may be 1 whatever we need no need to see the numerical part just consider the variable part here and we have to ignore the order of the variables that means x squared y and y x squared both are the same x squared into y or y into x squared you will get the same thing that's the commutative rule of multiplications so x into y or y into x both are the same so we need not uh, consider the order of the variables it can be in any order only have to see that they are matching or not the variables with the powers so here we can see 7 x squared y 3y x squared and minus 3x squared y. First thing we are ignoring the numbers that 7, 3 and minus 3. We are just ignoring them. We don't care about that here. So just you have to match the variables with the powers. You can see here everywhere we have x squared and everywhere we have y. So these are all like terms. Next degree of a term. Now degree means a sum of the exponent of the variables. So in an let's see one example let's take this uh, term 18 p squared q cubed and r so first so this is the sum of the exponents of all the variables so whatever the variables are there their exponents we will add so first we will have so the power of p is 2 that is p squared means the exponent is 2 q cubed so the exponent is 3 and r r means r to the power of 1 so we will add them so 2 plus 3 plus 1 we get 6 
So degree of the term 18 p squared q cubed and r is 6. Just we have to add the exponent of the variables. So whatever the variables are there, all the variables we will just add the exponents. So we will get 6 here. So in this way we will find the degree of a term. Now degree of a total polynomial. So degree of a polynomial that means degree of a uh, what you can say, algebraic expression. So here you have to take the highest power of a particular term. That is the highest power of a particular term. Now let us take this polynomial 3x squared y 4x cube y plus 7x cube y 6 to the power of 6. So here 3x squared y these are the three terms. Now 3x squared y now let us count that. So 2 plus 1 the power of x is 2 and y means y to the power of 1. So total the power is 3 now. And here the total power is 4, 3 plus 1. And here the total power is 3 plus 6, 9. So together you can see here it is 9. So here you can see the highest power of these three terms is 9. So first term has the highest is 3, second is 4 and third is 9. In, so when you compare all these three, the highest one is 9. So the degree will be 9. Next. Numerical value of an algebraic expression. Now let us take this expression 3x squared y minus 2xy cube z plus 7. Now when you say numerical value, so we will put uh, some values to these variables. So let us take x is 1, y is a minus 2, z is 1. That means when we put x, y and z the values in this expression, what will be the value? That is the question here. So let us take the expression and assign the values to these variables. So wherever x is there we have put 1, wherever y is there we have put minus 2 and z is 1. So just calculate. So that becomes now 3 into 1 squared, 1 squared means 1 into minus 2, minus 2 into 1 into minus 2 whole cube. That's the important thing to remember here, minus 2 whole cube. So minus 2 whole cube means minus 2 into minus 2 into minus 2. So that one you have learnt in integers, that becomes minus 8 into 1 plus 7. So now we get 3 into 1 into minus 2 that becomes minus 6. Then the second one uh, minus into minus first we will do plus then 2 into 1 into 8 into 1 that becomes 16 then plus. So then solving the integers we will get the answer as 17. So in this way we can find the value of an algebraic expression when the variables are assigned some particular numbers. Then only we can find the value of an expression and these are that x is 1, y is minus 2, 7 is 1, uh, z is 1, this will be given in the question. Then only we can assign it. So in this way we will find the numerical value. Thank you and keep exploring.